I've passed out the list of Missouri Militia gear checklists. I know every single one of you has this list, and every single one of you has all the gear you need. Uh, however, we were anticipating a lot of new people coming in here today, a lot of new people, including some new people you know, to the militia who, hasn't, who haven't had time to get their gear yet, but also a bunch of brand new people. And, and as Mike said, I think what happened was uh, we had a lot of inquiries recently because you know, it's like when Obama first got in the office, you know, gun sales skyrocketed and yeah. there was a lot big interest and we had an interest, you know, more interest in the militia. Well, people were anticipating Hillary getting in there uh, and I thought she was going to get it because of fraud, not because of any, you know, uh, not because of any fairness, but because of the rampant fraud that they conducted. But I thought Hillary was going to get in it. But I think a lot of people thought that Hillary was going to get in it. And so we had a lot of motivated people. And now that uh, Hillary was defeated, uh, what's oh, going to happen, I'm afraid, yeah. is conservatives are going to go back to sleep. Yep. You know, they're going to yes. say, okay, everything's fine now. Republicans are in charge. Well, guess what? Republicans are just about as bad about taking your rights away as the Democrats are. Mm -hmm. yeah. right? So we still need to keep Trump to the fire. We need to keep all these Republicans. We need to keep their feet, you know, to the fire. Uh, but anyway, that's my theory on why actually none of these people who made inquiries actually showed up today. Of course, today's the first day of a uh, gun season, too, and that might have... Yeah, yeah we have does. some excused absences here uh, okay. from guys who are actually out of town for that reason. All right, so. yeah, right. Um, yeah, so, I mean, we were expecting a low turnout today anyway. Um, but, uh, so, uh, so I had prepared this list, you know, for our new people, but since I printed them up, I thought I'd go ahead and pass them out here in case you want to review it during my presentation uh, today. Uh, now, again, my presentation was meant for new people. I'm going to talk about this. I'm going to talk about, you know, your rucksack, think what things to put in your rucksack. Um, and all you guys are, you know, old timers. You've already got your rucksack. All right. If you would just um, bear with me, though, I'm going to try to give you some new information, some, you know, things that I've learned, you know, that you might not have uh, considered. So, you know, just kind of bear with me there. Uh, and also, I'm recording this. As you know, I have a YouTube channel, uh, and I make prepper survival type videos. And I thought, well, this would be a good one because I'm talking about your get home bag or your, you know, your go bag or your bug out bag, whatever you want to call it, 72 hour bag. All right. And so that's a good prepper topic. Uh, so I'd like to make a video. An advantage of making a video also is all these people who couldn't make it today because they're out, you know, hunting. Uh, and all the new people who come along, um, you. you know, I can tell them about this video, and they can they can watch this video online, and it may help them out. You know, so if you guys bear with me um, for that, the name of the title of this particular uh, presentation is "Let Your Missouri Militia Rucksack Also Serve as Your Get Home Bag." All right, so we have our gear list, we have our rucksacks. All right, and. Um, Rather than, but and we're also all preppers, and one thing preppers do, of course, is we make uh, our bug out bag. Or I think what's more helpful than a bug out bag, though, because I'm not planning on bugging out. All right, what happens, you know, if we have a disaster, you know, New Madrid fault cracks, you know, St. Louis falls into a hole or whatever, <laughs> um, the river runs backwards or whatever disaster, <laughs> economic collapse, right? Uh, an EMP, electromagnetic uh, force, which knocks the grid down, or knocks the electrical grid down. Terrorist attack, which knocks the electrical grid down. All right, more than likely, we're, we're gonna be, where we are at that time is where we're going to, to stay. All right, however, if you're at work, um, you know, you're gonna wanna get home, right? And so that's the reason I think, you know, more than a bug out bag what we need is a get home bag and of course the important thing is that you carry your get home bag in your car at all times because it won't do you any good if it's sitting at home or right, say so if you work in st louis but you live in uh, you know outside st louis in the suburbs or something all right if the, if the grid goes down there's no electricity all the lights are out you know traffic jams and everything you're gonna you're gonna want to get home right you want to get, get back home where you can take care of your family where your supplies are where your family is, hopefully, you know, they're, they can make it home too. Uh, so that's the reason I think um, a get home bag is important. It's got to stay in your trunk at all times. 
a get home bag also can serve though as a 72 hour 72 hour bag it's got everything you need in it hopefully to sustain you for 72 hours uh, if you do need to bug out say there's a train wreck close to your house there's chlorine gas poisoning everywhere and they and you decide to evacuate you know again you've got it it is your you know your go bag um, but also a lot of the equipment that is in our get home bag or our go bag is a lot of the equipment that is on this list um, our Missouri militia gear list um, including the bag itself all right so what I decided to do is rather than have two separate bags you know then you got to buy two bags you got to buy you know water filter for this bag a water filter for that bag and rather than have all these uh, duplicate items you know why not have our Missouri militia rucksack serve also as your go bag all right so when you put your items in here you know not only do you want to you know take care of the Missouri militia gear list uh, but also anything else that you want to put in here because your go bag is going to be very personal according to your, you know what your needs are what your perceived needs are uh, and so you know this I'm what I'm telling you showing you today is my go bag okay this is not your go bag it's my go bag all right so certainly feel free to um, you know to, to adjust this to ever how you want to adjust if you don't like the stove that I use you know you, you like yours better fine if you want if it's something you need to put in there you know I've got like certain medicines in there that I need you're not going to want the same medicines, you know. If you have high blood pressure or whatever, you're going to want your medicines, either, or obviously. Uh, but anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down. We have the uh, gear list uh, level one. We have level two gear list. All right, what I have in my go bag includes items from both gear lists. All right, now one thing I mean I want to point out is that not everything that's in the gear list is in my go bag. Okay. All right, and um, you know, for instance, um, binoculars. Binoculars are a good thing to have. I just don't have room for them in here. Uh, you know, many other things uh, that are on here. So in this list, if you look at this list, I have highlighted things, certain things that are in bold. Those are the things that I actually have in my go bag. All right. Now then, when we go off for um, uh, UTX or JTX or something. I'll make adjustments to this, you know, because there are certain things that are on the Missouri Militia uh, gear list that I will want in my uh, in my rucksack when we go to a special you know, uh, event where we need our rucksacks. Uh, so I do make adjustments to this from time to time, especially if we're going to go off to UTX or something like that. I'll go through everything and I'll say, okay, I don't need this, I don't need this, I don't need this. I do need this, I do need this, I do need this. Um, and another thing you do is uh, you might want to make adjustments according to the season because the, the, what you want on your go bag may be different in the summer than in the um, winter, right? In the winter you might want to, you know, think about cold weather, maybe put an extra layer of clothing in there, you know, just maybe a sweater. Um, hopefully you're, you're wearing, you know, what you need. Um, you know, I go, sometimes I go to... Um, grocery store or something it's like freezing freezing cold outside you know blizzard winds blowing even snow sometimes and uh you know i've got my coat on my gloves my long underwear i've got all kinds of got blankets in the car all kinds of emergency equipment and i watch these people as i'm parking my car i watch this guy get out he's wearing short pants <laughs> a t-shirt and he gets out and he's freezing so he runs into the grocery store you know, it's warm in the grocery store, it's warm in his house, it's warm in his car, it's warm in the grocery store. And he just has to worry about that little run from his house to the car, from the car to the grocery store, etc. you know. All right, and I'm thinking, you know what, that works okay for you, even though you look like an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but that's, you know, it looks like an idiot to me. Maybe to the average person out there, you know, he doesn't look like an idiot. Because I see a lot of people do this. But the thing is, all right, what happens if your car breaks down, you know? <laughs> yeah. And especially, you know, if you're out, you know, a little ways from the city or something like that. I mean, even if you just have to get outside your car, I mean, you know, heaven forbid you got to change a tire. I guess, you know, probably what he's counting on is calling, you know, for help or something like that. But, you know, help doesn't always come, especially on, uh, in an emergency situation. It may take a long time, you know, for help to get there. It's the same principle uh, you heard me talk about plenty of times before about, you know, always keeping the gas tank in your car at, at least. Um, you know, half full. I top it off every time to us, the halfway, when we've been doing this for years, 
Thus, the halfway mark is empty. When it hits that halfway mark, I mean, I'm pulling over. I don't care where I'm at. I'm pulling over and it's just and, and top it off, you know, because then whenever that situation occurs, because you never know when it's going to occur, when it occurs, you've at least got a half tank of gas, you know. People run around. I mean, I still see people who are on the side of the road carrying these gas cans because they run out of gas. And I'm thinking, you know, you look as dumb as that fellow at the grocery store. <laughs> you know, Maybe it's the same guy. Yeah, actually, probably is to a large extent. Oh, but anyway, oh, um, that's what we're we're talking about. Your um, now, one thing, uh, one thing I'll mention, and again, this was going to be geared toward our new people, but I'm going to throw it out there for the sake of the video, um, and that is, uh, you know, we we give people a year to accumulate what they need on level one, so we don't recommend that new people come in here and immediately run out and buy everything on level one. All right, for one thing, you're going to spend a lot a lot of money, which you might be better off spending in other places um, but another thing is um, you know you're gonna you're gonna buy something and then you're gonna see you know Jim's that bag of UTX or something like that and you say wow I like that stove I wish I'd gotten that stove let me show you one of the first stoves that I bought okay and it's heavy all right it's a Kelly kettle I learned right. from Doc I like it I've got two of them I like it <laughs> But it's not for your go, you know, for your go, go bag. I got two of them. I got this is a little one, there's a medium, and then there's a large one. I got the large one, and I got the small one. Now, if, you know, it, the kettle does hold water. I mean, so it is another way to carry water. It's stainless steel. It's heavy. Uh, the kettle does hold water, and also um, it burns um, anything like sticks. All right, so you don't have to have fuel. So you have an unlimited amount, you know, as long as you have sticks and things like that to burn, you have an unlimited amount of fuel. All right, I justified it in the fact that, well, you know what, I don't have to carry fuel. I've got an unlimited amount of fuel. And so I used to, like, even strap this thing on the side of my bag like that. Uh, but it's heavy. And one thing I learned carrying this thing when we go to, you know, U2X, one of the most important things I've learned at U2X was to lighten your load. <laughs> right? Oh, yeah. All right, so I'll show you the stove that I have now. It also requires no fuel. It also would burn sticks and things like that, and I love it. Um, but anyway, this is an example of like what not to buy. Um, and I'm gonna do a lot of examples of what not to buy. Um, because I've bought, <laughs> I've bought all the things that you shouldn't buy. All right, so when you're looking at this list, again, don't run out and buy everything. You know, you have time to get it. You know, buy a little bit at a time. Before you start buying a lot of stuff, see what other people have. Um, and then also, um, you know, keeping, don't let, not being perfect prevents you from use, getting like good enough all right and if you're brand new and you don't have one of these military style bags uh but you've got an old backpack you know maybe one of your kids book bag or something like that you know go ahead and take that now put some bottles of water in it put some food in it put a blanket in it and put it in the back of your car right or at least you started somewhere all right at least you got some believe me when uh, when something happens having that little bit of food and water in a blanket you know, could be a, a, a big difference as opposed to having nothing. So get started, regardless of what you do, get started. Then work to improve that. You know, then when you find the bag that you want, buy the bag that you want. You know, then as you, you know, work and gradually, uh, you know, acquire things, improve the bag. Now, um, on this list, there are some things on this list that I think are a little bit dated. Um, one is M65 field jacket with liner, okay? All right, that's jacket used what in uh, up to the Korean War or something like that. Oh, no. 65 is your clue. The M65 yeah. is, came out in 65. All right, that's what I'm wearing today. Okay, I'm a gear junkie. I saw this list. I went out and bought an M65 jacket. Uh, no, not really. Actually, I bought this jacket actually before I uh, joined the militia. This is my um, this was my um, apple seed jacket. You see my apple seed patches on there. So this, I, as an apple seed instructor. I bought this. It has, I got the liner. Actually, I like it. It's a good, I treated it rainproof. I like it. It's a good jacket. But what I'm saying is don't feel like you've got to run out and buy some old 1965 jacket. There's a jacket you like better, you know, get that jacket. And pretty much the same thing goes with the rest of this stuff. He also, on, on this list, he says something about Alice packs, you know, the old Alice packs. World War II, I think, was when they used the Alice packs. Mm -hmm. All right, I, um, I, had a, I have a medium. Alice pack with frame. I had a large Alice pack in frame. And when I moved, I left them <laughs> <laughs> at the old house. Dan has them now. If you want to buy an old Alice pack, 
uh, seed down, he might sell you one. But I had the medium and the large. When I moved, I had to downsize. You know, I went from a large place to a real small place. And Dan can tell you, I left a lot of stuff in that home. And I appreciate Dan allowing me to do that. Uh, but anyway, I'm wearing this jacket to show you, you know, what not to buy. <laughs> okay. Let me put this down because I'm getting warm. Um, Point proven. All right, now um, another thing uh, I'll mention is um, about food. Um, and, you know, a lot of people want to buy MREs. And, of course, MREs, I think most of you know, are totally inappropriate for a go bag. Um, before you spend a lot of money on MREs, okay, our, our, our pack is supposed to have three day food supply, right? All right, imagine a three day food supply that's one meal, right? You're going to put a three day food supply in there? You know, of course not. Uh, I don't like MREs. First of all, they're, they're crappy, uh, they're full of junk. I mean, if you read the ingredients, you know, it's a lot of sugar, a lot of corn syrup, and who knows what kind of chemicals they put in there. Um, and, and they don't taste very good either. But anyway, mm -hmm. I, I want to show you, this is, uh, well, you know, some people like them, but some people eat at McDonald's, you know, sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, uh, I want to show you, this is uh, an MRE that I ate yesterday. <laughs> All right. So, I mean, in an emergency, I'm not, a, I'm not above eating stuff like that. You know, if I'm hungry, you know, I figure eating an MRE is better than eating your neighbor, right? <laughs> All right. This is the trash. That an MRE leaves behind. This is a consumed MRE. One MRE. One MRE. That's the trash right there. All right. Now, so after you eat, you don't want to leave a trail behind you, right? After you leave, what do you have to do? You got to bury your trash, right? There you go. You can burn it, but what if you can't? You know, have a fire for security reasons. Um. So anyway, one thing I'm going to show you in here is going to show you some other types of food, like freeze dried uh, foods and stuff like that. Uh, but one other thing about your emergency bag I want to mention is your, your go bag is not your car emergency kit. You need a separate car emergency kit. Here's mine. In your car emergency kit, of course, you know you need a few things I have in there. I have gloves, a tire, tire repair kit, you know, I've got a tow strap, I've got uh, jumper cables, I've got, um, I used to carry those flares with me. I got those. But look at that. I mean, you got not only a light there, but look at that. I mean, that's really, really bright. And there's, I got three of them in here. You know, with the technology, LED technology and all that kind of stuff, you know, who in the world wants to carry around flares? Of course, flares do have an advantage. Um, one is you can leave them behind. You don't have to pick them up. And uh, another is you can, like, start fires with flares like that and stuff like that. So if you like flares, you know, fine. I'm just explaining why. You have to click this thing like a hundred times to make it stop. Alright. Because it has so many options. So, you know, I got, you know, simple tools. I mean, so, you know, this, the, the subject of this uh, presentation is not what to have in your car emergency kit. My point is, uh, you need this too, you know, and you're not, you know, when you, when you, your, your get home bag, you're not going to carry this, right? If, if you're stuck on the highway because it's the, the, you know, highway's full of cars, you, you know, incapacitated because of EMP or just traffic or whatever, mm -hmm. and you have to hit out on foot, you're not going to grab this, right? <laughs> but you will grab this, all right? So your, uh, your get home bag is not your car bag, but I wanted to mention that because you do need, you know, a car bag as well. Uh, another thing is, if I have to head out, head out on foot, there are certain things that I might actually take out of here, you know, got a long walk, you know, this is kind of heavy, you know, I, I don't really need this, I may leave it in the car, you know, so you can make adjustments like that, otherwise you may end up like leaving it on the side of the road somewhere, um, and I've done that too. Um, here, a little quick sideline, back in 1979 I did a two month hitchhiking tour of Europe. And I had a backpack and everything, and I had this little gasoline stove, and uh, and I got over there and the heavy, you know, gasoline stove, and I couldn't find gasoline for it because it required unleaded fuel. And back in 1979, there's no such thing as unleaded fuel in Europe. Um, everybody's using these little propane things, you know. So I ended up leaving that thing on the side. You know, I was hitchhiking, tired of carrying it. I'm sitting here for like two hours, no ride. Um, and I just left it right there on the side of the stove. Brand new, actually, I hadn't even used it yet. Uh, but you know, when you when you start 
walking long distances like that and you know sometimes you start leaving a trail like Hansel and Gretel of things that you don't need um, I will mention though at, um, at that time I was not smart enough to put an American flag on my backpack I had read in a tourist book they said you know if you're hitchhiking put an American flag on your backpack and you'll get picked up more often so I actually carried an American flag with pins I put it on the back of my backpack and when I was hitchhiking I turned that toward the road first car stop I started getting rides like crazy at that point because everybody wanted to practice their English everybody wanted to talk to Americans and everything like that I started getting uh, I started getting picked up then including by chicks I, I wasn't Fortunately, there. it's not that way anymore. <laughs> yeah, right. I wouldn't. I'm not. It's 1979. Still with the chicks, it is. Yeah. Right. I was in 1979. You know, really today depends on where you are. You know, I don't. I was in Europe, which is pretty, you know, U.S. friendly city of uh, city, but they've let a lot of un, you know, a lot of, I mean, country, but uh, your continent, but they've let a lot of people in who you know hate America. So really, I probably, horrible. I probably would not do that today. Um, but anyway, that's a side side note. And speaking of side notes, I have a tendency sometimes to uh, get off track. Right and when I've uh, exceeded my time here today, I want you to kind of give me, you know, give me when you when it's like ten minutes, you know, do that, and then I'll, you know, wrap it up. Uh, <clears throat> and another thing I want to mention, if you look at your gear list, again, this was intended for new people, and I need people. I hope you're watching this video. <laughs> uh, but there are some gear. You know that you're you're not going to carry in your uh, in your go bag. That's the, what I did was unzip unzip oh, that yeah. to take to take out the uh, MRE. Yep. Okay. Well, remind me not to sit there. Yeah. <laughs> um. All right. Now you know. I made I made a video on my YouTube channel. Um. If you want to see my YouTube videos, go to survivaldoc.com. Is the easiest way to get there. Um. Now, if you um, if when you're if you bug out, I made a video called uh, "What Not to Wear When Bugging Out." All right, this is what I call tacto cool, right? I mean, <laughs> tacto cool. But if you bug out, if you look like that, some people have a holster with a you know pistol right here. Yeah. If you bug out looking like this, <laughs> you know you're asking for trouble. Um, and that's the the video that I made was in "What Not to Wear When Bugging Out." Uh, and when I made it, I really kind of made it as kind of a, a funny video because uh, I watched a lot of prepper videos and I was making fun of preppers, including myself, you know, who go out and buy all of this, uh, you know, militarized looking equipment, camo equipment and stuff like that. Um, you want to be a gray man. You know, you don't want to stick out. If, you, if I'm walking down the road like this, I stick out like a sore thumb. You know, I don't need my magazines. I'm not even, not even carrying my rifle. Um, but uh, one thing that's on the uh, gear list is it said like a Y, har a y harness or an H harness or a load bearing vest. You know, it's like the Alice packs. I think the, the Y harness and the H harness, and I've got them, um, is, um, you know, I think most people, I, I haven't seen anybody lately wear one of those. Everybody's getting these uh, load bearing vests right here with the Molly uh, things. They're just, I mean, there's a reason that the um, Army replaced all that old equipment with this new equipment, you know, because they, they learn from experience. Um, but anyway, there are certain items that are on the gear list that are on my um, load-bearing vest here. All right, these items I don't need when I'm bugging out or, or in my, in my get-home bag. And I certainly don't want to look um, tactical cool. So this has got to go. You know, I don't even... Uh, I mean, that doesn't go in my car. What that does is that, that goes with me. Um, that goes with me, you know, when I go to UTX or JTX or something like that. All right, this is what goes in my car. So my point is, again, not all of the gear that's on your gear list is appropriate for your uh, your get home bag. All right, so I'm going to go through. Uh, you're going to see a lot of the items that's on our uh, gear list. Um, one, I'll start with the bag. There are all kinds of options with the bag. Uh, you, you know, military surplus, I think, is better, and the reason for that is because of cost, you know, primarily. This bag is German uh, military surplus, brand new, um, online for like 50 bucks. It comes in this version, or also a camo version, but the camo version is not woodland, it's, um, what's that German stuff, um, 
flick turn. Yeah, flick turn stuff. And actually, I have one of those. I have one of those too. I told you I was a gear freak. Uh, now, the reason I have one of those is because uh, I have a bag for my wife too. Um, and it, it, it's different from this bag, but I, ha I do have one. For She'll those stand things. out. Yeah. You'll blend in. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you see, you know, you see uh, a woman with a bag. You don't automatically think, you know, military or you know, type stuff. Um, all right. Right here, one of the items, of course, is your uh, poncho. Certainly, poncho is important. It takes it's heavy and it takes up a lot of space, but I think it is something that's important because if it's raining, you know, you're going to need it for sure. Uh, and especially, if, especially if you have to spend, spend the night out, you know, out in the in the outside somewhere, the, the uh, poncho will also serve as some protection, you know, from dew and cold. It'll help keep you warm. Uh, so I think even though it takes up a lot of space, the poncho is important. Another thing that's on our list is a poncho liner. I do have a poncho liner. I, I meant to bring it today. I actually didn't bring it today because it's, it, it's not actually in my kit right now. The poncho liner uh, quilted thing that, you know, ties to this thing. And you can put it on this thing and kind of make a, a, you know, like a, when it's a little bit cooler. And the reason it's not in there is so my bag's set up, you know, for summer right now. Although, actually, I probably won't put that in there in winter either. Um, but, um... But it's bulky, it takes up a lot of space in here. Um, now one thing I will mention, there are a couple other things that I keep in my car besides my go bag and the, uh, the kit, the uh, car kit. And I'll show a couple. One here's a sustainment patch, a sustainment pouch. I don't keep this in the car all the time because you know, the car gets hot, cold, temperature extreme. I don't want to expose a lot of food to hot and cold. If we're going to go on a trip, like if we're going to go away for the weekend or something like that, go visit family or something like that, you know, I've got two of these filled, and I'll throw these in there. Each one of these has full three-day supply of, um, you know, freeze-dried food. I'm not going to pull all this out because I got, I'm going to move pull something out that's in here. Um, freeze-dried food and also um, some ready-to-eat uh, foods too. Uh, so, I mean, I do sometimes, I do have extra because there's a limited amount of food that you can put in here hard to get three days of food in here plus so I do have a couple of these I just throw in there sometimes another thing I throw in there sometimes is this right here it's a sleeping bag all right I throw this in there in the winter time if ever we're going somewhere even if it's just going from like out to where I live you know into St. Louis for like the day or something like that um I'll always in the winter time well in the winter time this pretty much stays in the, in the back of my car sleeping bag I mean you never know uh, it's not something I keep in there in the winter time all right, so we saw the poncho right here. You want to put your items when you're packing your bag a couple of things you want to keep in mind uh, I read different opinions on this uh, from preppers. They say put light things on the bottom heavy things on the top You know because that if you shift the weight up higher, it's easier to carry that All right, that's something to keep in mind. You might want to do that All right, the same people also say but put the items you need ready readily access to put those where you can readily get to them, right? All right, the problem is that doesn't always work out. Sometimes the heavy items are the things, you know, that you don't need to get to. Um, and so I kind of go more with being able to get to stuff. Uh, again, this is the bag that I've used. I've, li I've lived out of this bag, you know, for weekends at a time. You know, primarily when we go to UTEX or JTX, I live out of this bag. All right, so this is not something I just put together and put in the trunk of my car. It's something that has evolved over the last, you know, few years. Um, as I found out, well, what works, what doesn't work, what do I need? One thing I found out is uh, when we're at UTX or, J or JTX particularly, is when they call us for food, you know, and I had to go grab my fork and knives and, you know, eating kit. All right, I, I want to get it quickly <laughs> so I can get there and get the food, right? All right, so food, you know, for some of us, it may be a high priority, and so you might want to put your fork, knives and fork up high. All right, one thing I want to get to quickly is like my gloves right you might get out it may be cold you need to protect your hands immediately uh, you might want to um, you know might need to get out to change a tire or something like that even when it's cold now I also have a pair of gloves that's in the car kit all right this right here is a strap that I have that goes across here to hold you hold this one one disadvantage about this is it doesn't have it does have the belt here of course but it doesn't have the strap that goes across this way. And it, it works okay without that, but I like it. Um, so I, so what I did is I put these things on there. These are things you can buy 
at it. And that's the good thing about this strapping, um, this Molly strapping, is you can do so much with it. But I bought these and put on, and I, and I made this thing right here so that I do have that across my chest. So, um, so if you buy that bag, if you buy this particular bag, and I do recommend this bag. Um, you want to explain to them why you do that? Okay. Um, well, the uh, the shoulder straps would have, they can have a tendency to like slide out this way, and this kind of keeps them pulled in. So so you're not like you know doing this all the time. It um, really kind of depends on your your anatomy, your build. This bag works okay without them, uh, but I'm you know I wear suspenders, and so I mean I have trouble keeping holding things up anyway. Um, so, and while I'm back here on the back of the bag, I will mention also one thing that I have in here. This bag also comes with a place to put your um, your hydration kit here. And so as you can see, I do have my hydration. This is a three liter. All right, so um, it's, it, it's, so it's good to have, um, I actually don't have water in this thing right now, but I do have water in my canteen. But anyway, uh, also in here, I have a few other items. Don't necessarily need in your your go bag. I have uh, protective glasses, and the reason for that is we're going to be doing some shooting. I need to grab glasses. You know, this is same with earplugs. Uh, <clears throat> if you're uh, staying with a bunch of people and you got to snore, you know, and you keep you're being kept awake all night by somebody snoring, you know, you can put these earplugs in to help you sleep. I only do this though when you have a watchman. <laughs> you know, otherwise you want to hear, you know, what's going on. But if you, you know if you've got if you've got um, you know, people uh, like we do, um, <clears throat> you know, watch and we have people on watch at night. You got people watching for you. Um, I got keepers. These are a thing I've learned from experience, very handy. You know, keepers are, you have your belts for your whatever it is, your load bearing vest or this, you have your belt that comes around. The keeper, you know, goes around your belt and that other belt. Or especially if you're, if you're not wearing suspenders, like I am, you know, then you can use your bag to help hold your pants up. Because sometimes when you're carrying a lot of stuff, you got you know got stuff in your pants, weight, you know, including your concealed carry, um, a lot of weight. Sometimes this really helps because you use your you know you use these straps here to help you know keep your belt together. Um, keepers are very very handy thing. A couple other things I have in this bag is I have um, net mosquito netting. Uh, if you're out at night and you know mosquitoes are biting, you know just put that over your hat, over your face, you know, to make you a lot more comfortable. And then I have a notebook and pencil, um, you know, to make any kind of water, you know, waterproof no notebook. Um, so that's what's in. And these are all, you know, in this particular pouch right here for a reason. These are items that you know. They say we're gonna go, okay, we're gonna do some target practice, you know, grab your ear, eyes and ears, you know, they're right there where I can get to them. Um, and of course the gloves come in handy all the time for all sorts of reasons. Okay, so we went over this this pouch, this pouch. All right, this bag has a couple of different departments. All right, see, we've got a compartment here, and we've got the main compartment here. We look at the next compartment here. Now, first of all, I'll unfasten these right here. This helps hold everything together. Another nice thing about a lot of the military bags here, so I'll just loosen that. Um, <clears throat> this pouch right here is where I have a lot of items that I need to get to quickly on top, like food, energy bars, uh, flashlights. I have several different sources of lights in here. Uh, this I have because it's on the gear list. Uh, if you want to use a different type of flashlight, I think it's okay. But I have an LED, whatever you get, I would get, get an LED flashlight. And you can even you have a flashlight that you like that has the old type of bulb. You can get LED bulbs to replace that and replace those. I don't recommend you use the rechargeable batteries in these because invariably what will happen is they'll, you know, they'll self-discharge. Got regular batteries in there. Um, but they make these now that are real small. Like Uncle Sam's, you can get these that are a lot smaller. And they still put out a lot of light because of the LED technology. Um, I might replace this. This one is actually it's pretty light. It's not as heavy as the old ones the military used to use. Um, also in here, I have salt and pepper and some spices. You know, that's just a personal thing. All right, and I have uh, my food. All right, what this is is this is who recognizes what that is? This is the um, 
the um, like entree. 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 Okay. This is the entree of your MRE. All right, this is really the part of your MRE that you need. All right, just just the entree. You can buy these separate. Pop I bought cards. a bunch of these. I bought several cases of these. You can buy these online separately. Just look for MRE entrees. Dessert. All right, and um, but anyway, so that's like one of these things here. All right, let's look at some of the other stuff that we have in here. Okay, beverage-based powder, orange beverage-based powder. Ingredients, number one, sugar, citric acid, natural and artificial flavor, FDC yellow number five, FDC yellow number six. I mean, really, this what this is, is like 99.9% .9 sugar. You know? I'm just not into sugar that much. Um, you know, heater, that's nice. You don't really need a heater. Other, you know, junk, strawberry jam, if you read the ingredients, the number one ingredient is this strawberry jam, first ingredient is like um, corn syrup, no sugar, sorry. Uh, actually, this doesn't have corn syrup, most of them do, sugar, strawberries, uh, so, so but number one ingredient still is sugar, but anyway, you know, you get a lot of sugar, a lot of junk there, um, yeah, you know, maybe you want a lot of sugar when you're burning a lot of energy, I don't, I think, you know, what sugar, you get quick energy with sugar, but you don't get sustained energy. What you get is a, you get a spike in your blood pressure and then you get a crash, right? If you eat protein, your protein can convert, um, your body can convert protein into energy just as easily as it converts sugar, but it does it slower. If you eat protein, then what you get is some, you know, gradual increase instead of a spike, gradual increase and then a gradual decline in your blood sugar level, which is much better than getting a spike than crash. That's when you want to take a nap, you know, eat your sugar, spike, then crash. Okay, nap time. <coughs> All right, some other things that are on our list, magnesium fire starter. You know, you know what these are, I'm sure. You know, it has a magnesium here and a striker. All right, what you do is um, you scrape off some magnesium filings and then you, you strike it with that and it helps it's, it helps you light a fire. The good thing about this is, is as long as there's magnesium there, you know, this thing practically life, lasts a lifetime. As long as there's magnesium there, you know, you got a light. Now, um, uh, starting fire is important. Sometimes you just want to, you know, something quick. I mean, so I also have matches in here. These are your um, water, waterproof and windproof, water and windproof matches. Um, and then also my favorite, which is one that I use. <laughs> the other one's really kind of backups, you know, but the... Uh, um, and then, so, and then some other things here is uh, your saw. One thing that's on our list is your saw. You know, that's your little cable saw. If you need to cut, a, you know, small sapling in order to make a, a litter, you know, improvised litter or something. Now I have a few other things in here you might not necessarily need in your go bag, but they don't take up much space. This right here is a mouth, a mouth reading protractor, real lightweight. Um, and, you know, we use these when we go on UTX and JTX. I also have them. You know, compass in here, and also my counting beads. All right, compass is something you definitely need. You know, the pace beads. Um, don't anticipate using these. You know, when I'm trying to, you know, get back home. But I have it in there because it doesn't take up much space, and um, and we use them. You know, um, and then also an e-tool. Not an e-tool. A um, multi-tool. Multi I have an e-tool too, but it's not in here because it is, e an e-tool is an entrenching tool. It's like a shovel. It's heavy. I got one of those teeny small ones. Too. Yeah, I've got a pretty small one too, but it's you know it's still like this big and and it's and it's heavy. Yeah, mine's heavy too. I've removed it from my bag. And of course, you're eating utensils. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, very very important thing. eating utensils. You know, you may end up in a chow line. People, you know, nice people, you know, giving out food. You end up in a chow line. You want to be ready with your utensils. All right, that's what's in this pocket. Um, it also functions as a uh, weapon, too. <laughs> what, your, your plastic? And the reason I use these plastic, I mean, I got all kinds of, you know, Boy Scout uh, kits, um, Girl Scout kits, which are better than the Boy Scout kits, actually. In the same um, But, you know, that's, that's adding weight. These are right here, like, so light. Well, these are almost weightless. And they're actually easier to use uh, than those. So, I mean, for the sake of weight, yeah. I, I use the plastic ones, which I got at um, like Bass Pro. 
All right, got, let's talk about the saw. And then the other thing I have down here in the bottom of this is, is food, you know, freeze dried food. This food right here, these are um, the long range patrol rations I got from freeze dried guy. These are really extremely hard to find. A freeze guy, dried guy, freeze dried guy. Doesn't have them most of the time. Is that but, a website? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but anyway, these do require um, some preparation. Uh, what you do is, you know, this is uh, like, you know, you eat your entree, it's instantly ready to eat. You eat that for like when you're on the road, but you're eventually you're going to get somewhere where you're going to be sleeping or, you know, camping out or whatever, and you got a little bit more time to start a fire maybe. Um, but anyway, with these, all you got to do is boil water, add, just open this, add boiling water in here, shake it up, let it sit for 10 minutes, and then eat right on a packet. And these are really good uh, meals. What is um, that one? This is beef stew. Uh, but I mean this and this this is made by the military. This has 40% more protein than an MRE They actually are good. They actually are that they're, they're great food All right, when you rehydrate this and they also have breakfast like scrambled eggs and ham and stuff like that And when you re rehydrate those it only takes just a, just a couple of minutes And if, if you I eat out of here, but if you pour it into a plate or something looks at that they think you scrambled up eggs with, you know with with ham and peppers and stuff like that. I mean, that's the thing about freeze-dried food. I mean, it's once you rehydrate it. And the cost difference? Oh, uh, these things are here about five bucks a piece. What's the shelf life? Yeah, the shelf life is a long time. <laughs> you see, it's, it's compressed, yeah. you know? Yeah. I mean, there's like no air in there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, stuff like this. It should last longer than MREs. Yeah, it should last longer than MREs, right? Uh, Most freeze-dried stuff is 25 years. Yeah, yeah. Most MREs right. is 10. Right. And then you got your uh, emergency whistle you want this kind of where you can get to it fairly easy you know if you're if you're down break a leg or something like that you're down people are looking for you know and you know you think they're over there or something <laughs> anyway you just blow that you know what an emergency whistle is for well, if you're running, all right through. but um <clears throat> but another thing uh, more there's other freeze-dried food besides those because you probably are not going to find those <clears throat> but you know there's all kinds of freeze-dried foods that you guys know about you can buy these at bass pro and stuff places like that uh this right here is the pineapple chunks um the thing about freeze-dried food, for uh, for the most part, is you can open it and eat it right out of the packet. You know, you don't have to rehydrate it. And I don't care what it is. I mean, even if it's chicken, it's, it's cooked. Uh, but with, for this right here, uh, you know, I could just open it, and it's delicious. It's like eating dried, you know, dried food only. Like trail mix stuff. Um, yeah, but it's better than trail. Mix. Be careful if you're going to eat it right out of the pack. Make sure you have enough hydration. Because okay. that will pull a lot of water. Yeah, there's, yeah there's no water. There's no water in here. So, yeah, definitely. Well, hydration is something, you know, you should, I mean, you should definitely be doing anyway. Um, but, yeah. And, and if you want to, you know, you can add water to it. You can reconstitute these. All you got to do is just open it, pour water in there, let it sit for a while, and this will soak up the water. Um, and, and eventually, if you let it soak up long, long enough, this would be just like eating, like, pineapple chunks. Like this, just like eating pineapple chunks out of, the, uh, out of a can. If you rehydrate these, put it in a bowl and eat it, you could not tell the difference between eating these and eating, you know, like pineapple chunks out of a can. So you can rehydrate them, but you do have the option of just, you know, if you're in a hurry, need quick food. Uh, so that's the reason, you know, I prefer freeze dried food. You can also get, you know, these kind of protein bars and stuff like that. That's what this is. It's a protein bar. Um, but anyway, those are some of the food options. Again, I have, you know, the entrees, which is really, you know, that's really the meal. Uh, if you want, you know, to eat something with it, I mean, you can carry, you know, you know, freeze-dried food to eat with this if you don't want to just eat this by itself, or crackers, you know, this doesn't include crackers or something like that. I mean, you can always make adjustments, stuff like that. All right. Um, so the entrees much less costly than the MRE? Yeah, they're, yeah, they're, uh, they're re very reasonably priced, yeah. Um, they, yeah, they definitely are cheaper. Do they come with the heating kit too? No, there's no heating kit. Just this, no, that's right. I mean, you, you actually, they do sell heating kits. Yeah, um, yeah, I know. Separately. You get the heating kits separately. Um, you know, I eat them cold. We'll take them out of the MRE to use those, can't you? The heating kits, you know. Yeah, right. I mean, I, you know, if you want heating kits, you know, just... There you go. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't need one. I, I've got okay. plenty of them. All right. Before my, all right. Uh, and yeah, I mean, you can buy those. You know, you can buy those if you Mine want. Mine don't work at the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah, sometimes when they, they, don't. they get old, they don't. All right. Now the main compartment. Oh, before I get the main compartment, let's look at the side here. All right. I have my uh, my medic kit here. 
All right, now, you know, this is, I'm, I'm the, you know, official medic for our group, and so I have more stuff, and I carry a bigger medic kit than you guys are gonna carry, right? All right, so you don't, you know, the ones that most of you guys carry is the little IFAX, um, the uh, improved first aid kits. This has everything that the IFAX it, it has in it, but it also, it had more room. Um, now, one thing you wanna do is, whatever, whatever how you have your, uh, your kit, you wanna have your tourniquet right there. Where you can pull it out and get to it in a minute. So you want it on the outside. You don't want to bury it in your bag. You don't even want to bury it in here. Whatever you have, you want to be able to see the tourniquet, you know, from outside, and be able to scrap it just like that. Because you may you may be applying the tourniquet to yourself, um, and you don't want to be, you know, you're shot, you're bleeding to death. You know, you don't want to be messing around with that. This particular uh, Max Expedition is is nice because you just pull it off like that and carry it with you. Um, it has a lot more room, you know, for a lot more stuff. I put a lot more stuff in here, including, you know, some pain pills and some silver gel and uh, stuff for diarrhea. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to explain that. And, and the main key is, you know, you want to have your tourniquet right there. And your other pouch? And what? And the other pouch? The other pouch is my communications pouch. This is my work, my ham radio. All right, I've got um my ham radio right now. It's in an IMP bag uh, with some electronics. And uh, while we're on the subject of, of ham radio, you know, you want to have what extra batteries, right? This is an extra battery. All right, this is uh, where I can plug it. And uh, this is not a battery. This just allows you to plug it into 12 volt right here. So you can plug this in your car and, and use it, you know, without a battery, just using directly. All right, here is a, um, this allows you to use a, a AA batteries. All right, so if instead of using, you know, that one, you want to use AA batteries because maybe you've got a charger, you got AA bar batteries, and maybe you've got a charger where you can charge your batteries with the sun, right? And here, of course, this, um, that's a solar. I don't normally have both of these in there. That's a solar panel uh, charger. You charge, you know, not only radio, but also charge your, um, here's my radio antennas in here. And um, here's another, this is one that I like. This is um, another charger. It also serves as a light. But it's, um, what kind of bag is that again? This is an EMP, EMP proof bag. But anyway, so you set up your charger there, charge your batteries with it. This is a this is a nice waka, waka waka. I actually did a video reviewing this because what they did is they sent me one of these for free and said, would you do a video? And um, that's cool. Of course, you know. Where'd you get the EMP bag at? I got that from John Moore's website, deliverdemand.com. But you just do a search for them. And here's a little battery charger I can plug that into that solar thing this this holds like double a but anyway so this is this is really what I call my electronics pouch uh, but primarily you know primarily what it's for is this for my helm radio that's you know for my for my communication in there that's what this thing is size for got room for everything but the helm radio <laughs> Actually, when I'm in, a, when a, you know, when I'm not in a hurry, I can spend more time like packing it in here a little bit, you know, a little bit neater. But sometimes, you know, if you're in a hurry, I mean, should be, should be able to do it quickly too. All right, now the main compartment. Oh, before we get to the main compartment, uh, I'm talking about my canteen. Uh, there's all kinds of ways to go with the canteen. Of course, plastic canteens are perfectly fine. If you, your, if your canteen comes with these little pouches on the side, the reason for that is for these water purification pills. All right, they're, they're not expensive. You can get them on Amazon.com. Got water purification, and then there's another one that you put in there to take out the bad taste, of water purification pills. Um, this, this particular has one has two different pouches on each side. So I also put some hydration salts in there that I made up myself um, that I can, you know, I can add in there when, I'm, when I want, want to rehydrate. And over here I have more of the uh, 
I've got the, the water purification tablets and then the ones that take out the bad taste for the water purification tablets. We've got all kinds of ways to purify water because your primary concern, I believe, is going to be clean water. You know, first of all, you can't go very long. You can go, long, you can go for a while without food. You can't go very long without water. And second of all, water is going to be polluted. It already is, but especially in the SHTF situation, uh, you know, people going to the bathroom outdoors and stuff like that, the streams that are already polluted are going to contain a lot of fecal matter. They already do. You don't want to, you drink them now, you're going to get sick. All right, you get diarrhea, you know, drink that water, get diarrhea. Um, I mean, so water purification is important. I got other water filters in here, but that's the reason I really have, um, you know, a lot of uh, duplication. All right, I, uh, I opted for the uh, stainless steel canteen. Mm -hmm. uh, one, of the, one of the advantages, I mean, one of the things you want to do when you put together your bag is you want to have things serve more than one purpose, if possible. So the stainless steel canteen serves also as a way to heat water. You can put that, you know, I, I put this thing like on a campfire, I've, oh, you know, taking the top off. I've got a little clip here where I can actually remove the top because it is plastic. I can remove this chain here entirely. And I put this thing, just set it like right in the ashes. All right. <clears throat> or right in the coals. Heat water very quickly. Another thing um, I like, this is my, you know, you, you need to carry something to put food in, right? You in a chow line, of course, they'll have paper plates and stuff like that probably. You're in a chow line, you just give them this. This actually holds a pretty good bit, you know. So you're in a chow line, they're putting out soup or something like that, you know. Actually holds a pretty good bit. It's stainless steel too. Um, you know, your canteen fits in it. Um, but anyway, that's what I use to cook in, to heat water in, etc. cetera. Um, Question. Mm -hmm. Your hydration salts, is there a particular type or? I use like nothing but Himalayan or sea salt. Yeah, all right, it's, it's a mixture of, uh, that I put together. It's like uh, one teaspoon per, per quart. It's like um, of water. No, actually, it's not per quart. Um, yeah, I think per quart. Use one teaspoon of uh, regular salt, like sea salt, a quarter teaspoon of salt substitute, which actually is potassium um, chloride. It's another form of salt for people who are low sodium but it's a form of potassium, and then there's also a little baking soda. All right, so it's like, it's a teaspoon of sodium chloride, regular salt, table salt, or sea salt, or mineral salt, um, and then half a teaspoon of potassium iodide, which is salt substitute. You get the grocery store real cheap. So Himalayan's okay? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. And then, and then, a, and then a half a teaspoon of the um, of baking soda. All right. Um, Four. <clears throat> um, they, I think that's a core. Um, I tell you what, though, or a liter, if you mix that up and it's too salty, just water down some. Baking but I think soda's for the... It's, it's for the uh, sodium bicarbonate. It's another form of... It's just for the electrolytes. Okay. That's it. That's it. All right. Anyway, here's the main compartment here. <clears throat> now, what I have in here, I have my towel. I have my extra pair of socks, you know, from my list. I have three more uh, entrees because again we want to have you know three day food supply. This right here is just other straps I have because one thing thing I mentioned about the Molly here is you know you can if you have the strapping material you can attach all kinds of things. I've actually got this set up to where I can also carry my sleeping um, mat, also my sleeping bag, and also my tent all on this. You know, putting the tent on top, the sleeping roll, you know, on the bottom. Um, so anyway, that's where the strapping comes in. All right, this right here is a homemade bug, sp bug spray. <laughs> Sorry, don't like bugs. Um, one of the things that's on our um, our list is the uh, the camo face paint. I don't anticipate using this when I'm bugging out or going home. It's in here because it's on our. We need it at UTX and JTX. You know, we need it, so it just happens to still be in there. You put on stuff like that and you start, you know, get yourself all camoed out and stuff like that when you're, you know, again, you're, you're, you're flagging yourself. Um, now, one thing I have here is this is the bivy cover, you know, for the uh, sleep system, the four-piece military sleep system. Uh, the bivy cover is Gore-Tex. It's waterproof. If you don't need a lot, if it's not that cold, but you want something just to sleep in at night, Partially protecting because it gets cool at night. In the summer, it gets cool at night, um, and it's waterproof. You can, you know, zip yourself up in this thing. 
it can rain on you. you, you stay dry. It also protects you from the wind and gives you some partial. Uh, but it is, it is something that does, you know, fit in your bag fairly easily. I mean, you know, rather than putting a whole, um, you know, sleeping bag in there. This pocket here, these are some things that are you need that are on our list. You know, cord, 550 cord, uh, parachute cord. This is just a little sleeping blanket. All right, this is the Life Straw. I think most of you are familiar with the Life Straw water filter. You know, you can uh, drink out of anything. You know, just open up these, just stick it down in the stream. Uh, you know, suck it up like a straw. This thing will filter like a thousand liters of water. Um, but one thing about the live straw is you can't fill up your canteen with it, you know, unless you, right? Um, so I do have something else in there, and I do have this. Um, this is a ceramic water filter. Basically, it works the same way as a straw, uh, uh, it, but it lasts for this a filter of a million gallons of water. All right. This right here keeps, is a foam thing, kind of keeps out large particles of trash. All right. And this is a little pump here. But this thing, what I like about this is it's real lightweight. You know, it's a little bulky, but it's real lightweight. Anyway, you clip this onto your canteen or your hydration pack. And you, you know, stick this in the water. And you can fill your hydration pack or your canteen. Um, mm -hmm. Something I just picked up somewhere. I've got better water filters, you know, but they're like in housing, you know, like a metal or plastic housing. You know, pretty expensive. And, 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 um, and they... Um, add weight and bulk. What I like about this is, I mean, this is really light. Does the ceramic uh, filter out chemicals? Um, yeah. It, um, yeah, 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 you know, it, it, huh? not, yeah, yeah, they do. I've checked yeah. into them. They yeah, the ceramic, the ceramic pretty much will get everything out of the water that's going to harm you. Uh, not the fluoride. I think that's a special kind of, but mm -hmm. you know what, on a short term basis, drinking a little fluoride is probably not going to kill you. Um, but yes, it, it does. I mean, it, you can put pretty much put a ceramic filter in any water and drink drink it, you know, without without harming yourself. And then also, I told you I was going to tell you about my stove. This is my stove. This is a solo stove. And there are all kinds of options with your stove, of course. You know, you got your, you know, your little German folding stove. And you got your little Swiss um, stove, which burns uh, alcohol. You know, it's like, um, uh, what do you call those things? Sterno. Sterno. It's like a sterno. Has, it has a little stand with it and a matches right there. Everything you need right there. Um, but you know, with these you run out of fuel. This has fuel in it too. It has the trioxane tablets in it. Um, you know, I've tried to boil water with a trioxane tablet. You know, good luck. It takes like, you know, an hour. Um, and you use every trioxane tablet you got. Uh, this right here, really, really lightweight. All right, I have some trioxane tablets in here. I don't use, I don't, they're not for this stove. I put them in there because it's on our gear list, you know, I like I'm a, you know, obsessive compulsive, you could say. You're a gear junkie. If it's on the gear list, you know, I've got it. Even if it's an ILS pack, and I, you know, well. uh, But anyway, the I thing about it. the tri to try yeah, got it. the thing about the trioxane is if you need to start a fire uh, in a hurry, and, you know, you can just light it and start a fire. If you got, if you're dealing with wet materials or something like that, and it's hard to get it started, you can always just fall back on one of these. You know, you put, you know, light this. It'll burn you know, for a while. It's a tablet. Uh, and then you can, it'll dry out, you know, what you're trying to burn. Uh, this right here, what I have is a solo stove. I actually have two of these. They come in three different sizes. I've got the large size, uh, which is, which I have in the, in the kitchen of my home, which is large enough. I can put a pressure cooker on top of it and cook, you know, cook with a, like a large pressure cooker. I mean, you, with our frying pan, anything. It's big. It's like bigger than a you know coffee can, a three pound coffee can. Question. Mm -hmm. The tablet you, you showed, if you don't use all of it, is the way of putting it out no. and using it no. again, no. or is it done? When you light it, it's going to burn until it's done. Okay. All right. What I like about this stove, this is one piece, no rattling, except for this right here. All right. That will rattle. That's the reason when I put it in here, I put it in in a way that would not let it, allow, allow, allow it to rattle. rattle. This is one of those real high-tech stoves, you know, that does a double burn. Air goes in here, it's a double container. And what happens is that your material burns here, and then the gases come up, and it burns the gases. So it produces no smoke. You get a complete burn without smoke. Um, and when you see this thing running, it's amazing. The flames come out of here, it looks like, like a natural gas, like you turn on a natural gas burner, you know. What's the fuel? 
Yeah. Anything. That's what I like about it. You don't have to carry fuel. Sticks. <clears throat> um, sticks. So and where does the, where's the fuel go? Right there. Inside there. Yeah. Okay. Much right. like right. the Kelly cattle. Yeah, well, it's the same principle as the Kelly cattle. The difference is um, the double burn. You know, if the Kelly cattle, you'll notice you get a lot of black right. soot. It burns that. The double burn. And also, what it does, there's like a vent, you know, slot down here. Okay. What it does is airflow. Uh, makes it burn really, really well and fast. It's, got, it's kind of like a rocket stove. This, it works like a rocket stove, same principle. Air goes in here, comes in here, quick burn, second burn here. I mean, it just really, really burns efficiently. Oh, this goes on here like what's that. What's the name of that, Doc? Huh? What's the name of it? Solo. 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 Yeah, Solo oh, Stove. Sorry. You just search for Solo Stove, they got a website. It's expensive. Uh, there are a lot of knockoffs of this stove too. You go to Amazon.com, uh, you'll find all kinds of knockoffs. None of them are exactly like this, and none of them are as good. But there are some, you know, pretty good looking ones on there. If you want to spend a lot less, huh? Yeah. Call for that. Uh, this right here is about, uh, I think, uh, at least seventy-five dollars. Wow. Yeah, you can get knockoffs about thirty. Um, you you pay more all right. Yeah. The thing about this, um, one, one thing I like about this stove is, uh, look at there. And you have, you know, you have this cut out here. That's where you continue feeding it. You can continue feeding it, that's sitting on there. Also, this thing right here. You know, piss on there. Same way. So they work, they work together real good. Um, and when you have content in that cup pretty much in it, it'll hold it so it's not so light and want to fall off. Right, right. Yeah, you just, yeah. You just have to kind of make sure it's level. But anyway, so um, or to bring, I found to prevent that rattling noise. You just put that in there like that. Put that like that. No. Totally. And it's hard to get a stove that doesn't rattle. Yeah. You know. And I have this thing way padded to prevent to prevent rattling. Um. All right, so that's what's in the main compartment. And in the main compartment also is where, you know, if you want extra clothes, you can put them there, you know, extra underwear. You got a sweater, you know, a little layer. All right, the only other compartment I got remaining is this part here. All right, a couple of things I want to go over. Uh, one, you want to make sure you have a mount, okay? You know, GPS might not be working, all right? Um, but if you're in the city, you want a city mount too. I got a mount from Missouri because I live in the country. Uh, but if you're uh, if you're in a city, you might want to get a city mouth as well as a whatever mouth for your area of operations there. Um, bags. This is just a bag. Uh, toilet paper. Right. Uh, wait till your roll of toilet paper gets down about halfway, and then take it and you know, squish it. You know, so you don't have wasted space there. Um, bags. Plastic bags. All-purpose soap, you can use this to wash your hair, wash your body, wash your dishes, anything. I think I'm going to put that in a smaller container, though. So. Uh, this is something extra that's not on our, our list that I threw in. This is a a little, uh, like a little sink. You open this up and put water in there. And you can put, uh, you know, heat water, put hot water in there. Nice. And to wash dishes in there, and there's a rag inside I've got there. But um, I like it because it really comes in handy, and it folds up. This is military surplus. This is not U.S., I don't think. Where'd you get that? Um, online somewhere. I don't remember <laughs> exactly where. And then, um, and then you got your personal items here. Now, what I did is I, you know, I put a few band-aids in there. Um, this is where you put, you know, chapstick, your toothbrush, whatever you know your personal items are, uh, including your essential medicine. Um, I put tweezers in there. It's not part of a regular, you know, regular first aid kit, but you know, tweet uh, splinters, splinters are, are yeah. common. And one very, very important thing you want to have in there is you want to have most. Right. Uh, if you get a blister, start getting a blister on your foot. You know, cut this. Mold skin. Mold skin. Yeah. Um, you cut. You know, cut the size that you need, and it sticks directly. Stick it directly. Like, like if you're heel, you're rubbing the heel of your foot. You just cut the size you need, and it sticks directly to your foot. Then you put your sock back on, on top of it. Uh, absolutely essential because if you're if you if you start messing up your feet, you know you're going to be in trouble. Yeah. Uh, you got to take care of your feet. And speaking of feet, another thing I didn't mention, um, you know, I'm assuming you're going to be dressed appropriately, uh, appropriate for the season. You're not the guy wearing the short pants and the t-shirt, right? You're dressed yeah, yeah. appropriately for the season. Uh, but, you know, you probably throw your coat in the back seat, you know, if you, if you, or keep additional, you know, clothing in the back seat if you need it. And particularly, 
you know, like good footwear, very, very important. Uh, if you work in the city, you know, you have to wear dress shoes or something like that. Those might not be the shoes that you want to walk three days in. So, you know, take your well broken in good foot gear um, and just put that in there and, you know, beside beside your, your go bag in, in the car, you know, so. So there may, you know, use your common sense. There may be things that you want to, you know, put in there that I don't mention here. But, uh, you know, make sure you do help. Or, or, or if, you, if you dress up to, to go to work, if you're gonna, you know, you think about, okay, I need to change clothes, something appropriate to walk home. You know, have that in your car. Uh, if it's additional a layering, you know, to keep warm when it turns cold or at night, if it's, you know, better footwear than what you normally wear at work. Um, but anyway, that is um, <coughs> Survival Docs, get home back. Any questions? I said enough, right? Probably too much. <laughs> <laughs> no, you didn't. Well, no, you no pretty much. Okay. Yeah. Oh, and one other thing. I'm sorry. I knew there was one <laughs> no. other thing. No, this is important. This is important. This is very important because it's something that people fail to do. And that is here. You remember that little thing I showed you with my, my mouth thing? That little All right. I've got like 60 bucks cash in there. Or right, you need cash. Or if electricity's off, you know, credit cards are not working. There are a lot of people running around with no cash in their pockets, right, Jim? A lot of people running around with no cash. I think that's, that's as crazy as the guy who is walking into that grocery store wearing short pants, being without cash. Or what if, you know, the system goes down, there's no electricity, or you need to you need to buy something. Someone's got, you know, extra gas, you know, can of extra gas in the back of this cup, truck, he's willing to sell it to you. He's not going to take a credit card. Stores are not going to take credit cards. You know, they might not take anything, but they, um, uh, but they will they will take cash you know one thing I do in my wallet at all times is and my wife does this too at all times in my wallet I got a little thing right here I got a hundred bucks there's my address book because again I'm not relying on technology you know you guys have all your addresses and your little smartphones and everything there are my addresses right there all right and I also got a hundred bucks in there my wife does the same so between the two of us, I got a hundred bucks cash. She's got a hundred bucks cash, and I've got about sixty bucks in, in my go bag. So we got about two hundred sixty bucks. That's enough to you know, you know, bribe a, bribe a, whoever you need to bribe or, just, or, <laughs> or buy gas or what. Buy somebody. Yeah. But you also you want keep, lots of small bills. Ninety percent. Otherwise, solar. everything is the twenty dollar right, bill that you right. got rather than the ones or right. the fives. The money that I have in here is I got five. I got several fives. I got a ten, and I got like a couple of things. Question. What about the alternative to that? If there is something where all electronics is down, nobody's taking our bills, gold, uh, some of new yeah. pneumatic coins. You're, you're going to do better off. You know that may silver. change in the future. You're going to be better off with cash. Cash is liquid right now. You can carry silver. You might find people who will take it. I'll take it. I've got a bunch of whole old quarters. Right. You know what? We may get to the point if the dollar completely collapses and we don't have a currency in this country anymore. That's what you're going to be using. As long as we're using paper currency, though, that's what you need to carry. You need to carry the most liquid form. Now, you have that at home. And if we really get to the economic collapse and get there, which I think we will. Actually, yes. I think one of these days we'll get there. At that point, you might want to take some of that silver coins and put it in your coin. Yeah, I'm going to tell you, if you gave me 10 quarters for a $50 bill yeah. right after everything happened, I'm going to take the $50 bill yeah. being right. the layperson. But right. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The only yeah. reason I yeah. ask that is because there the might be people out there when we do have the collapse, even though it's yeah. only temporarily, yeah. that might say, well, our dollar is no more good, even though we know it is. Right. They might be, you might come across some of those who are inclined and say, I don't want anything to do with that paper. Yeah. When we get to that point, carry silver. But until we get to that point, if that guy knows that he can take that $50 bill and then turn around and pay this guy, he'll accept well, it. that's true too. Yeah. And All you're right. driving and you need to get gas. The gas station is going to take 50 bucks. They're not, not going to take silver. Not quarter. Right. You know what? That's there was a video. Yeah. Some guy online tried to get Give away gold, My one guys. ounce gold yeah. rounds, yeah. and what? And, and people would not take it, you know. And, and he, he, what he tried to sell it to him for like a dollar or two, he and was, people wouldn't. He was get giving it. it away, like yeah. either that or like Stupid. a piece of chocolate or something. Yeah, right. Candy, bar. candy, candy bar. bars, candy bar. and people like did not recognize that bar, gold. Bar now, I, you know, I That's think because that thing's worth like twelve hundred dollars, right? right. Uh -huh. I, and it's and it's liquid. You can instantly turn it into cash. Yeah. All right. I think though we're going to reach a point where people are going to learn fast. You know, the people who don't know what gold and silver are, they're going to learn because when their dollars are no longer good and everybody else is out there exchanging gold and silver, they're going to take it, you know. Uh, 
All right, but anyway, we're not at that point. Seven, two dollars fifty cents. When you're at that point yeah, where gold definitely. and silver is the commodity, even you know dollars, the big commodity is going to be ammunition because if somebody's low on ammunition, they'll trade anything for ammunition. For barter, yeah. Well, you Could know you what? I mean, game. barter. There's all kinds of things we use for barter. Lighters. That game. big lighter I have in there. You know, that lighter for someone who doesn't have a way to start fires. That lighter may be worth a lot of money. Lot of someone money. may be give me twenty dollars for that lighter. How much ammo do you more. have in your bag? All right, Emma, I don't have ammo in my bag because I carry that. And what? I carry, um, I've got ammo. my concealed carry, ammo. and then I've got my so extra, and then I've also got some in my car. All right, now, if I'm going to go, I will grab, you know, what's in the car. I've got extra, I've got extra magazines in my car. All right, now, as far as, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, you know, cross country with carrying a rifle around me. I'm not going to wear, you know, these things like that. I just don't. Uh, you know, it may be wise to do that. Maybe wise to carry a bigger gun. I tell you one thing about a 380, a pocket holster, and a 380 is it's always in my pocket. And your gun is not going to do you any good when it's sitting at home because it was too heavy to carry. Now I've gone through all kinds. I got a Super Tuck Deluxe holster. You know, I've got Phobos holsters for my Glock. You know, I've got two Glocks. I got a Glock 19, a Glock 22. Uh, you know, I've got all kinds of guns and all kinds of holsters. They're heavy, pull your pants down, and you know what? I see people all the time say, oh, what are you going to do with that 380? I'm sitting in a restaurant eating, uh, seating, eating, with, eating with a guy. Oh, you know, 380 is not big enough caliber. You know, and then this guy, someone had a, a CC, a, a concealed carry, right? And I said, do you have your weapon on you right now? No. And I said, I do. And I learned I can wear this when I'm wearing short pants, when I'm mowing the grass. This is always in my pocket. All right. If I was carrying a bigger or bigger gun, even if it's concealed, you know, I mean, you're gonna you know, say you're gonna go outside, you know, to to mow the grass or something like that. Oh, you're gonna sweat, you know, it's really uncomfortable. You take it off and set it. What if someone accosts you while you know, you know, out, you're out in the yard or something like that? This thing is always in my pocket, and that's the reason I'm, uh, you know, a nine millimeter, 38s, you know, 357 Magnum. I got all those concealed carry. Uh, 40 Smith and Wesson. I've got all those concealed carry. Got a shoulder holster and everything like that. You can't always wear that in the summertime when you're wearing a t-shirt, right? This right here is always in my pocket. And so when I, so uh, you know, 380 in your pocket is better than a 45 Magnum in the bush, right? Okay, I've I've talked long enough here. So. That's a pretty slim model. What what is that? What this is, that is a Ruger. Ruger. Um, the Ruger um, LCP. Though. LCP. Yeah. Yeah. Is it the new one? Have you seen the new one? I've got the new one. I've got two. <laughs> one is none. Two is one. No. One thing about having two of the same gun is you always have spare parts. If you have two of the same gun, you've always got spare parts. Everything. Now, I also have spare parts, too. I've got extra, you know, for all the guns that I have, I have extra, you know, firing pins, extractors, springs, you know, the things that could go wrong. For every single gun, I have rifle and handgun at all. I have a kit. Every single, that's one important thing you want to have. And you want to know how to, you know, how to disassemble and use your gun. You uh, one. But one way to do it is if you have two of the same guns, then you've always got a full set of spare parts. Three. Three what? The same gun. Oh, great, great. No, you should. Oh, I should. You know what?